but sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House, and Arthur's own nightmares have become far too real, as Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghost. Opal realizes she might finally have found a reason to stick around. In my dream, I'm home, and now she'll have to fight. Welcome to Starling House. Enter if you dare. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy, and welcome back to my horror house. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much. It means so much to me that you're able to take a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means so much to me. I appreciate you guys more than you know. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel, I hope you take a quick second. Hit that little red subscribe button over there and enter if you dare. Anyway, it's so much fun getting to read your comments and just getting to know each other, going back and forth. That is the best part of YouTube is making so many wonderful friends and just meeting so many wonderful people. That's the whole benefit of YouTube for me, and I appreciate all that you do for me. So anyway, and of course, your comments are welcome, and I hope you'll give my videos a thumbs up. So today, well, we're going to be doing our Book of the Month Club for October. We had six genres to choose from some really good choices so i'm excited to get into it i have got because these ones always seem to go a little bit longer for me even though i take breaks i need a little drink here and there so i've got a little bit of wine in my spooky glass this one is it's not a halloween wine it was just one that i happened to have from last year it's a cabernet sauvignon that was aged in cognac barrels it's got a really unique flavor and it's so so good cheers everyone don't know what day this is going to post so cheers i hope you are having a great great week cheers everyone mm. so so good so anyway we're going to do our halloween thingies first so from my ferreros the countdown to Halloween, the 31 day advent calendar for some candy that benefited the Children's Network Miracle Hospitals. I got another Butterfinger, so I am loving my Butterfingers. Better not take my Butterfinger. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, these are so, so good. Just love them. It's going to go good with my wine, I think. What do you think? And from Halloween, so I'm trying this outfit again. I got this kind of like collar on here it's all kind of feathers it has a tie in the back and then it's got like these kind of gears and this cameo right in here so it's just really fun we've got this crown type thing this tiara type thing that ties in the back that is really hard to do it's like you need someone as you're tying it to put their finger right there and hold it so you can make the bow i was the chief finger poker when my dad wrapped presents i always got to hold my finger so he could make a nice knot and um i put this back on i really have to get a safety pin i've got it as tight as it can go but anyway i just thought it went really well with that i've got this dress on that i've had for a few years from amazon it goes a little bit lower than i remembered so i had to improvise and i put a timu top underneath we've got some sleeves here that are all kind of kind of sliced or fringy and that's what the bottom looks like focus please but you can see how low this would have gone that my friends would have been too obscene so it's kind of like a kind of a form-fitting dress as you could tell from my belly bulges but it goes down all the way to the floor and then it's got those same kind of fringes kind of from the knees down just kind of so it makes it a little bit easier to walk I thought this might have gone good for like a Morticia Adams or something like that but you know I thought I would try it with this and just see how it worked all righty so book of the month club so i should have brought in the book that i'm almost finished reading with i'm reading a walk in the sun it's a vampire book it was written by one of the owners of the vampire winery that i just love their wines so anyway i'm almost finished with that book it was a really 
short read. It was easy reading. The pages were bright. The print was dark. I didn't even need to use that my um, magnifier over it. It's just kind of the words just left off the pages. Like I said, easy reading. I might have maybe 30 pages left. So anyway, it's really good. I am enjoying reading that book. So anyway, let's get into I don't know what I'm going to read next. So anyway, looking forward to doing this book of the month club. It's $15.99 a month um, if you choose to get a book that month, that is. And shipping, of course, is included in, in that, so shipping is free. Um, as you're a part of this, once you, if you want put a second book in with that shipment, your second book is $10.99, and shipping, again, is free. I'll have a link below if anyone is interested. Or if you know anybody that's in this that you're friends with or part of your family, yeah, your family members deserve that credit first. So anyway, if you decide you wanted to go for it, your first book would be $5. And then, of course, you would get that link so that if anyone uses your link, it costs $5 for them and you get a free book. And so I've gotten some free books. So I was able to pick a second book this month for free. And it, I can't figure out how to tell who used my link. So whoever used my link. Thank you guys so much because I was able to get two books this month. Alrighty, so let's get into our choices. I think I said everything I needed to do. So anyway, we're going to get into our first book. Alrighty, so our first book is a literary fiction. It's Wellness by Nathan Hill. Health fads and dysfunctional families and love potions. Oh my, break out your thinking cap for this novel of ideas. So when Jack and Elizabeth meet as college students in the 90s, the two quickly join forces and hold on tight, each eager to claim a place in the Chicago's thriving underground art scene with an appreciative kindred spirit. Fast forward 20 years later to married life, and alongside the challenges of parenting, they encounter cults disguised as mindfulness support groups, polyamorous would-be suitors, Facebook wars, and something called love potion number nine. For the first time, Jack and Elizabeth struggle to recognize each other, and the no longer youthful dreamers are forced to face their demons. From unfulfilled career ambitions to painful childhood memoirs of their own dysfunctional families. In the process, Jack and Elizabeth must undertake separate personal excavations or risk losing the best things in their lives, each other. Our next one is a fantasy, and it's called The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. Determined to break the generational curse, June Farrow ventures through a shimmering door into mystery and romance. In the small mountain town of Jasper, North Carolina, June Farrow is waiting for fate to find her. The Farrow women are known for their thriving flower farm and the mysterious curse that has plagued their family line. The whole town remembers the madness that led to Susanna Farrow's disappearance, leaving June to be raised by her grandmother and haunted by rumors. It's been a year since June started seeing and hearing things that weren't there. Faint wind chimes, a voice calling her name, and a mysterious door appearing out of nowhere. The signs of what June always knew was coming. But June is determined to end the curse once and for all, even if she must sacrifice finding love and having a family of her own. After her grandmother's death, June discovers a series of cryptic clues regarding her mother's decades-old disappearance, except they only lead to more questions. But could the door she once assumed was a hallucination be the answer to what she's searching for? The next time it appears, June realizes that she can touch it and walk past the threshold. And when she does, she embarks on a journey 
that will not only change both the past and the future, but also uncover the lingering mysteries of her small town and entangle her heart in an epic star-crossed love. Shaken to the core by the indictments of her life, Yara finds her carefully constructed and world beginning to implode. To save herself, Yara must reckon with the reality that the difficulties of childhood she thought she left behind have very real and damaging implications, not just on her own future, but that of her daughters. The next one is another literary fiction, The Unsettled by Alana Mathis. After hitting turbulent times, a mother fights for a better future for her son in this lyrical, gutting family drama. From the moment Ava Carson and her 10-year-old son, Toussaint, arrive at the Glen Avenue Family Shelter in Philadelphia, 1985, Ava is already plotting a way out. She is repulsed by the shelter's squalid conditions, their cockroach-infested room, the barely edible food, and the shifty night security guard. She is determined to rescue her son from the perils and indignities, indignities of that place and to save herself from the complicated past that led her there. Ava has been estranged from her own mother duchess since she left her Alabama home as a young woman barely out of her teens. Despite their estrangement and the thousand miles between them, mother and daughter are deeply entwined. But Ava can't forgive the sharp-tongued, larger-than-life mother whose intractability and bouts of debilitating despair brought young Ava to the outer reaches of neglect and hunger. Ava wants to love her son differently, better. But when Toussaint's father, Cass, reappears, she is swept off course by his charisma and his intoxicating power of his radical vision to destroy systems of radical injustice and bring about a bold new way of communal living. Meanwhile, in Alabama, Duchess struggles to keep Bonaparte, once a beacon of black freedom and self-determination, in the hands of the last five black resident families whose lives have been rooted in the stretch of land for generations and away from the rapidly encroaching white developers. She fights against the erasure of Bonaparte's venerable history and the loss of the land itself, which she has been arduously prepared as Ava's inheritance. As Ava becomes more enmeshed with caste, Toussaint senses the danger shimmering all around him. His well-intentional but erratic mother, the intense, volatile figure of his father, who drives his fledging Philadelphia community toward ever-increasing violence and instability, he begins to dream of the Duchess and Bonaparte, his home and his birthright, if only he can find a way to get there. Our next book is a contemporary fiction, The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwok. Steeped in atmosphere and mystery, this poignant portrait of motherhood and, belong and belonging will have you turning pages. Jasmine Yang arrives in New York City from her rural Chinese village without money or family support. Fleeing a controlling husband on a desperate search for the daughter who was taken from her at birth, another female casualty of China's controversial one-child policy. But with her husband on her trail, the clock is ticking, and she's forced to make increasingly risky decisions if she ever hopes to be reunited with her daughter. Meanwhile, publishing executive Rebecca Whitney seems to have it all. 
a prestigious family name and wealth that comes with it, a high-powered career, a beautiful home, a handsome husband, and an adopted Chinese daughter that she adores. She's even hired a nanny to help her balance the demands of being a working my wife and mother. But when an industry scandal threatens to jeopardize not only Rebecca's job and her marriage, this perfect world begins to crumble and her role in her family is called into question. The leftover woman finds these two unforgettable women on a shocking collision course. Twisting and suspenseful and surprisingly poignant, it's a profound exploration of identity and belonging, motherhood and family. It's the story of two women in a divided city, separated by severe economic and cultural differences, yet bound by a deep emotional connection to a child. Alrighty, so now for the first book I chose. It is a gothic fiction. And doesn't this cover make you just want to dig right into it? It's a gothic fiction. It's called Stalling House by Alex E. Harrow. Trick or Treat, the new caretaker of the spooky Southern Gothic mansion, may just have to find out the hard way. I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. Opal is a lot of things. An orphan, a high school dropout, full-time cynic, and part-time cashier. But above all, she's determined to find a better life for her and her younger brother, Jasper. One that gets them out of Eden, Kentucky, a town remarkable for only two things, bad luck and E. Stalling the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland, who disappeared over a hundred years ago. All she left behind was dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it's best to ignore this uncanny mansion and its misanthropic heir, Arthur. Almost everyone, anyway. I should be scared, but in the dream, I don't hesitate. Opal has been obsessed with the Underland since she was a child. When she gets a chance to step inside Stalling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape, she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Stalling House, and Arthur's own nightmares are become far too real as Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghost. Opal realizes she might have finally have found a reason to stick around. In my dream, I'm home. And now she'll have to fight. Welcome to Starling House, if you dare. Alrighty, and so for my second book, I picked a thriller. I know, a gothic, a gothic one and a thriller. Oh my gosh, it's going to be an exciting read. So, When I'm Dead by Hannah Morrissey. Alrighty, this twist-filled and visceral chiller will have you wondering how well we can ever truly know those we hold dearest. On a bone-chilling October night, medical examiner Roe. Rowan Winthrop investigates the death of her daughter's best friend. Hours later, the tragedy hits even closer to home when she makes a devastating discovery. Her daughter Chloe is gone, but not without a trace. A morbid mosaic of clues forces Rowan and her husband to question how deeply they really knew their daughter as they work closely to peel back the layers of the case, they begin to under unearth disturbing details about Chloe and her secret transgressions, details that threaten to tear them apart. Amidst the noise of the navigating her newfound grief, 
and reconciling the sins of her past, an undeniable fact rings true for Rowan. Kama has finally come home to collect. So what did you guys think of the choices this month? I think they had some really good choices. There was a nice variety. Again, we had two literary fictions, a contemporary fiction. We had a fantasy book that really sounded good, kind of like a nice mystery. We had the gothic fiction and a thriller. You know which ones I was drawn to right away. I love good mysteries. I love gothic thrillers. I love horror stories. I like even just a regular mystery that just kind of keeps you guessing to the end of what's going on. The book I'm reading right now, A Walk in the Sun, so, so good. It's a short story. Almost finished with it. It's really good. I'm dying to looking forward to reading my next book. I will probably pick one of these, seeing how they're not put away on a bookshelf and I don't have to go digging for them. But I have got some awesome, awesome books lately from the book club, the book of the month club, and I cannot wait to get into reading them. I'd love to hear uh, which books kind of appeal to you and which ones you read and what do you think of the two books that I picked out. They sound really, really good. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes to spend with me. I appreciate your taking time. I know there's tons and tons of YouTube videos. I know so many people that are subscribed to me are subscribed to so many people that I subscribe to. So I appreciate when you can find the time to spend some with me. So I hope everyone goes out, has a fabulous, fabulous time. And just remember how much I appreciate you. You guys really rock my world. And uh, I appreciate you guys so much. So I hope everyone goes out, has a fabulous week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life. Have some fun. Love you guys so much. And we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Hmm. I wonder what kind of costume I should wear next. What do you guys think? Cheers, everyone. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.